Station Houston, are you ready for the event? We are ready. JSC PAO, please call station for a voice check. Station, station this, this is, is Haley Fick, GSC PAO media, social media specialist. How do you hear me? Hey, Haley, we hear you loud and clear. Awesome. So first, we are going to take a couple questions selected from Twitter and Instagram, and then we will be taking questions live from Facebook. So we're going to start off for, uh, with a question from Kiana on Instagram, and she asks, what was the first thing you thought when you got to the space station and saw the Earth? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, looking out at our planet is spectacular. I mean, no matter how you how you look at it, if you're looking at day or night, no matter where you are over the planet. So to me, it was very humbling. So I think that's the word that came to mind looking out the window. It's just humbling seeing our planet from this perspective. Awesome. I think the first time I saw the planet, I think the first time I saw the planet from space, um, the first thing that went through my head was just how incredible the colors were the it's almost like they had texture it, it was just really beautiful awesome amber on facebook wants to know we always see amazing images of earth from the space station but i'm curious what kind of other views can you see from up there for example can you see satellites in orbit have you witnessed any meteor showers I've seen occasionally a satellite. What's really interesting, though, is actually I've seen one below us before, and it's pretty neat to think of us as being a, just another satellite up here orbiting the planet. Uh, but in general, no, you don't see them, especially during the daylight, uh, because of the it just won't light things up. So it has to be a dusk or dawn time frame to, in order to see those satellites, just like that's when you can see us uh, as dusk or dawn if we happen to be flying over your area. Awesome. Uh, Mandafa on Instagram asks, Earth or space, which one is more beautiful? That's a tough question. Um, I think viewing Earth from space is the most beautiful. <laughs> um, so a combination of the two there. But, you know, when you're looking at our planet, it's, it is spectacular. It's, you see the thin layer of atmosphere that protects everybody on Earth from living and dying, and it's, it's pretty unique. You see things like auroras that we've had the privilege of seeing up here every now and then that are just spectacular, you know, green, glowing, kind of uh, dancing clouds, so to speak, as, as we're going around the Earth. So that's pretty special. Um, as well as seeing all the beautiful colors that Peggy mentioned earlier. Sounds like a great experience. Bored Mama on Instagram asks, what could possibly be left on your bucket list? Actually, there's a few places based on what I've seen up here uh, from space that I'd like to go visit. I think Australia just looks so interesting, and even Africa, very beautiful places from here that I would like to visit at some point in time. So I, I would say to see them from a lower altitude might be on my bucket list. And for me, uh, you know, whatever, you know, our, we have hobbies on Earth as well. So um, there's some bucket list items for me and my hobbies that I still want to do. Uh, but if I could come up here with my family, I think that would be number uh, one. That's a good one. So this one, I think, is probably about a story of Peggy and the cargo bag. Brian asks, who has pulled the best prank in space? <laughs> Well, actually, it was fun because we all we all did it together. Um, we uh, Tomas is actually his idea, and uh, but he couldn't quite fit in the bag. And uh, I'm like, I think I can probably fit in. And so then Tomas and uh, Shane took me down uh, to the, see the Russians for dinner that night. And uh, I they said they had a surprise for him, and they unzipped it, and I popped out. So that was that was the most fun we've had uh, so far. <laughs> Awesome. CJ on Twitter asks, what inspired you to become an astronaut and work for NASA? Anything in particular? Well, for me, it was back to the 
uh, men walking on the moon when I was a small child. That's what inspired me to initially want to become an astronaut. Of course, uh, it takes a lot of hard work and education and, uh, for me, a career in the Army before I was even, uh, I would say, eligible to become an astronaut and work at NASA in that regard. So it's, it's a long career. It's something that's never guaranteed, and it just took a lot of hard work and dedication. And along those same lines, Urbina on Instagram asks, how have you used your university career in space? Well, actually, um, I'm a biochemist by training, and so I uh, got to do some stem cell research up here, so tissue culture of stem cells uh, in, in microgravity to see if they can proliferate better or differently than they do on Earth, and uh, look at that as future, for, and future applications of using those types of cells that were proliferated or grown in orbit. So that was one, one uh, very closely relevant area that I've gotten to work on. But I think what's most fun about the research up here is the diversity. When we have 200 investigations, almost 300 investigations per increment, uh, the, being able to do all different kinds of things is what makes it interesting on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have uh, people watching live, and Matt must be listening because he asked if you could add any experience to the, uh, any experiments to the space station, what would it be? Yeah, it's a tough one for me. We've had so many, uh, like Peggy mentioned already. The the most fun I think I've had was when we got the chance to grow lettuce up here, and that was really cool. Uh, it took four to six weeks for the lettuce to develop, um, but it actually was was really nice, looked beautiful, it was crunchy, we got to eat it, um, so it was nice to have some fresh vegetables on, on orbit. So maybe a few more things like that for me would be cool. Yeah, I'm a plant lover too, so I like that idea of having more plant plant experiments. Um, I, you know, I anticipate, and in the future, I think in the next few months even, uh, we will be doing much more uh, cellular-related uh, research, which personally I'm more interested in and uh, I think has some potential uh, for understanding some of the mechanisms of changes that go on. For instance, I think we're going to grow some bone cells and we can try and maybe better understand that bone demineralization process that occurs in us here in microgravity. Uh, but it also would be very applicable to our understanding of the process in elderly people on the ground as well. So Rob is wondering, do you ever wake up in the morning and forget that you're in space? No, it's kind of hard because uh, you're just floating around. So for me, it's pretty easy. You, you come out of your sleeping bag and you're floating and you're trying to you know, get dressed and everything to get ready for the morning. So uh, for me, I don't ever forget I'm up here. Steven is wondering, how long did it take you to get used to the lack of gravity? Well, I think you adapt uh, from a physiologic perspective, somewhere between a week to three weeks maybe. Uh, at least on my first flight, it took almost three weeks. On um, my second flight, I felt like I adapted in two days. And on this flight, I felt like I was adapted as soon as I was in space. Uh, in spite of the fact that it had been almost nine years between my second and third flight. So um, our bodies do adapt and learn how to work in, in this environment, but there's always frustrations, uh, you know, of losing a tool, you know, that you thought you had put inside a Ziploc bag and it floated out or had Velcroed it to the floor and maybe bumped it with your foot or something. So there's always those uh, things that kind of remind you frequently that, Zero gravity does have some challenges associated with it. So Daniel is wondering about the opposite. He is wondering what is the physical impact on your body when you return to Earth? Well, I'm about to find out here in a little less than three weeks, I guess. So this is my first long duration mission. It's going to be a lot different than my uh, shuttle mission I did a while back. So. 
uh, it'll be in interesting to see. We do work out a lot up here, and that's to help with our recovery back on Earth as well as keeping our bones and muscles healthy. So uh, I'm expecting, I don't know, a couple days to a week, um, somewhere in there. Everybody's a little bit different when you return to Earth. Some people um, are worse coming up and some are worse going down, and I'll just have to see. I'm a big science experiment right now, and I'll find out here in a few weeks. <laughs> Awesome. So Kim is wondering, besides the fresh fruits and vegetables, what foods do you miss the most when in space? Well, pizza would be on the list. Um, a lot, you know, we get occasionally cargo vehicles will bring up some fresh fruits and, and um, we've grown the lettuce. But I think the thing that I miss most is like, you know, a really nice crunchy salad with lots of different types of vegetables on it. Um, that's probably the thing I miss the most food wise. So Mark is wondering how long do you spend working each day and how do you contact your family? So our normal work day is from about 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 at night. So about a 12 hour work day. Uh, within those 12 hours, we do have a couple hours to, to exercise. So that's built in there. And then the rest of the day, we just do activities that are driven by all the mission control centers around the world uh, with science, with maintenance. Um, sometimes we're doing spacewalks like we do this, this coming Friday. Sometimes we're using the robotic arm to grab visiting vehicles that show up. So it's uh, a wide variety of activities and it keeps us hopping and uh, keeps us very interested of course, because every day is a little bit different, which is nice. Joe is wondering, what do you plan on doing when you get home? Well, it'll take, uh, like I mentioned a little while ago, a few days to recover at least, uh, but I just look forward to being with the family. Um, I'm getting home the week of Easter, so we'll spend a nice Easter weekend together with family and friends, and I look forward to seeing everybody. Robert asked, uh, does your perspective about the world change after you go to space? Well, I definitely think your perspective of the our planet changes because it, being viewing this our planet from this perspective, I think, makes you understand that it is, we're all living on the same beautiful ball and it's protected by this very thin atmosphere uh, and I do think you do have a different perspective on protecting uh, what it is that we live on, how fragile it, it is. Uh, I think, you know, the probably the most significant thing is uh, it does give you an appreciation of being one planet, one world, one people. Awesome. It is very international. So Ralph is wondering what time zone do you base your schedule on and is the whole crew on the same schedule? We are almost always on the same schedule. Great question. And we go off a of GMT time. So the time it is in London, Greenwich Mean Time. Um, and so it's currently anyway, it's five hours ahead of Houston time, four hours ahead of the East Coast in the US. And then you can do the math for all the other parts of the world. Graciela wants to know, how long does it take for your voice to travel to Earth? Are there any delays? Actually, uh, in the past when I've flown, we've had some satellite delays, so it might take, you know, you might have a second and it made it difficult to talk with folks. But I think these days, uh, there's really very rarely any kind of delay at all. And so when we talk on the internet, using internet protocol to our family and friends, uh, there's very, very little delay at all. So you don't end up talking over each other like we used to all the time. That's great because it's making Facebook Lives a lot easier for us. Um, Morgan wants to know, what is the most challenging food to eat in zero gravity? There's a lot of them. Peggy's going to show you some uh, chocolate coated peanuts there, the way they're listed on our food package. Uh, but if you open up anything that has a lot of pieces like that, and you're not watching very carefully, then they go all over the place. So um, things like rice are tough because they're really small and they kind of go everywhere if they're if you don't watch what you're doing with the rice. 
Uh, but in general, things stick together. If they have any liquid in them at all, they're going to kind of stick together and allow you to eat them a little easier up here in, in microgravity. A lot of times, too, we'll use tortillas as kind of just a vehicle to put something on so it doesn't go floating everywhere um, like Peggy's doing right now. So hope that helps. Awesome. Jack is wondering, is there an emergency way for you to turn back to uh, return back to Earth, and do you practice for that? Yeah, um, we have the Soyuz spacecraft with us right now. Each of us is on a, a three-person crew, so even though our crew on total is six, each of us, Shane and I, would be in different Soyuzes and would return home on those. Future uh, vehicles, commercial crew vehicles that will be arriving here will also uh, dock here and will provide that emergency capability. So if we had uh, a depressurization or a fire that was significant enough to require us to leave, uh, we would just get in our vehicles and uh, go home if we needed. We also have that as a, for instance, for medical emergencies or contingencies where we needed to get home, we might send one crew home with an injured or sick crew member. Laura is wondering, what does your exercise regiment consist of? Great question. It's very important for us up here. We're about two to two and a half hours every day. We work out. About half of that is uh, cardio. So we have a stationary bike, which is actually to my left. It's not very stationary because it's floating while you're riding on it. Um, and we also have a treadmill. So we do one of those, and sometimes we do both of those um, for our aerobic activity during a day. And then we have a machine called A-RED, which is a, it's a resistive machine. Um, so it's our weightlifting up here. Really incredible machine. We all love it because uh, it really gives you a nice feel like you're on Earth when you're working out. You can do everything from bench, bench press to squats to deadlifts to curls, triceps, you know, you name it, we can do it up here. And it's keeping our bodies toned and our, and our muscles and bones uh, healthy before we return to Earth. Awesome. So I think we have time for one or two more. Lisa wants to know, what do you wish we Earthlings would know that you now know? Space is a fantastic place. International cooperation uh, is a strength of what we're doing now and I think will be a, a very valuable asset in our future explorations. And I think it sh can show the world um, that we can do very technically challenging things uh, together. Okay, so one more for our Facebook Live audience. Um, Kevin is wondering, do you guys get iPhones, Facebook, or Wi-Fi up there? We don't have iPhones. We do have internet, but it's really slow. I mean, it's it's 20 years ago slow compared you know, to what you guys are dealing with on the ground. So uh, we do have the capability, but it's pretty weak. Um, what else? We do have the capability to talk to our families on this uh, IP phone that Peggy mentioned earlier. That's pretty nice. Family and friends we can call. Uh, we have email as well. That uh, It's not instantaneous, but it's pretty good. Um, and we're not checking it a whole lot because we're working most of the day. But in the evenings or in the mornings, we'll check and respond to emails. Awesome. Um, so I think we might have time for one more quick one. What is the first thing you want to do when you get back on Earth, Drew asks? Well, obviously, I want to see uh, my husband and my friends and family. That'll be probably number one priority. Getting that salad I asked for earlier be probably number two <laughs> priority. I, I think, um, you know, we have incredible views here, uh, and we get to look out the window. But I, I think I'd like to feel the sun on my face. Uh, in, during EVAs, you can kind of feel the heat of the sun on your face, but it's not the same as, as the sun through the atmosphere. Awesome. Well, I just wanted to thank you on behalf of our Facebook audience for taking the time to answer their questions today. And we wish you a safe and a uh, very happy rest of your mission. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.
Space at Houston. We are now resuming operational audio communications. 